This recipe is all about donuts. Lovely, warm, sweet, filled with amazing flavors. So we're just gonna show you how to make them yourself. So, so simple. So for this recipe, we're gonna use our mixer just to make our life a little bit easier. Cause this is a little bit softer. It's a little bit of a, um, a wetter dough. So for this recipe, we're using 500 grams of strong flour. A level teaspoon of salt. To that then, we're gonna use 75 grams of caster sugar. They are gonna be coated in sugar. They're gonna be making it with filling. They can be um, a little bit sweet. So that's why we're gonna hit it with a little bit of lemon zest. So you get that little bit of citrus. Just kind of really kind of cuts through it and just gives a lovely balance to it. So we've got the zest of one lemon. Roughly combine that together. We're adding 250 mils of milk, which we've just allowed to come to room temperature. Because if you take it directly from the fridge, you're gonna find that once your dough is mixed, your dough is gonna be that quite a little bit colder, which isn't an issue at all, but you will find that your proving time will need to be a little bit longer. Then to that then, we're gonna add one egg, and then we're simply gonna drop in 15 grams of fresh yeast, which are simply just gonna crumble straight in. Now, if you don't have fresh yeast, or you don't have access to it, don't worry, dry yeast will work perfectly fine. Because this is relatively quite a small amount of dough that we're making, it's only 500 grams of flour, easiest ratio to work off is two to one. So we're using 15 grams of fresh, you're gonna use about seven grams of dried, which is exactly one sachet. Once all the ingredients in together, Resist that temptation to really crank it up and to put on the high speed. I know sometimes we get impatient that we just want things to be done, we want to be finished. But with your bread, take your time. So we're just going to mix our dough a nice, gentle, slow speed. Because as the dough is mixing, there's thing what's called the friction temperature. It's the temperature that's created by the mixer. So if you were to really kind of turn that mix up to a high speed, you're going to find that you're, the mix is going to generate a lot of heat within our dough. And we do not want our dough getting too hot. So just take your time, let it come together nice and gently. So our dough is going to mix about for about eight to 10 minutes, just nice and slowly. If you find you need to scrape down the edges, please do. Always let our dough mix. So our dough has come together nicely, starting to come away from the bowl. So at this point now, we're just gonna slowly drop in our butter. So that's 75 grams. We're just gonna drop it in and allow it knead into the dough. You might find as you're using the mixer that the butter kind of gets pushed up the sides. You might find after a couple of minutes, you might need to scrape down the sides, make sure all that butter gets fully mixed in. So this recipe is a little bit lighter in comparison to some of the other ones that we've done before. Where we've gone for like a really high level of eggs and a high quantity of uh, butter. This one's a bit lighter. Um, so we want to have a lovely light airy dough. We still want that richness, we still want that sweetness. So we get a lovely balance. And that's kind of, as I said before, that's one of the main reasons we've got that little bit of lemon zest in there. Because you don't want those donuts to be heavy and stodgy. You want them to be light, fluffy. Yeah, and it's full of joy really. So our dough has been fully developed now. All that um, butter has been kneaded in. Our dough is looking silky and smooth. You can see it starting to come away cleanly from the side of the bowl. So I'm just using a little bit of sunflower oil in my hands. Just finds it really handy when it comes to um, handling the dough, particularly with these wetter, softer doughs. You find that everything won't stick to you. It's lovely and silky smooth. All those lovely little flakes of lemon spread throughout the dough. Richness from the butter, from the eggs. And simply straight into a bowl. Which again, just a little bit of sunflower oil. Just simply just stops the dough from sticking. So it just means later on when I come to get it out, your dough is just gonna lift straight out without sticking it all to the bowl. It's a very light rub of oil over top. We're just gonna stop your dough from drying out. So at this stage with our dough, we need, again, we need to let it to prove. So with a lot of enriched doughs, you'll find that the proving time is a little bit slower compared to say your regular yeasted breads. Largely due to the large fat content that's within the dough, it tends to inhibit our yeast, it tends to slow it down. So at this stage, we have two options. We can pop it straight in the fridge and the dough will quite happily sit there all night, which is kind of, particularly if you're gonna maybe make some donuts at the weekend with your kids, with your family, you could easily make this dough the day before, have it done in advance. So simply next day, just take the dough straight from the fridge, We'll roll them, we'll let them prove, and then we'll fry them off. But if you want to kind of bake them now, we're going to leave it sit at room temperature, and it's going to improve for at least two hours. So we'll cover that over, we'll pop it aside, and in about two hours time, we'll come back to it, and we'll knock it back, and we're going to shape them. So our dough has been proving for the last two hours. So what we want to do now at this point is we need to knock our dough back. Because at, at the moment you'll find the internal temperature is much higher than our external temperature. So by knocking it back, it's exactly what it sounds like, we literally knock the air from it. So the idea is we equalize that temperature, we stop that cycle, and we start a new one. So knock it back, just turn it out, basically try and make your dough into a nice round ball. By doing so, you'll end up deflating it, you're kind of back to where you were just over two hours ago. 
So all that's really left to do now is to portion and to shape our dough. So if you're not used to portioning dough, don't be afraid to use the scales, particularly because if you want to have some sort of consistency. And it is quite important because the bigger they are, it's going to, the cooking time is going to vary. So try to look for that little bit of consistency where possible. So if you're cooking donuts at home, but 60 grams is absolutely perfect. So once we've our dough portioned, we simply just need to roll them into little rounds. And we're gonna arrange them onto our tray. So again, because in a little bit later, we're gonna to have to pick those, each individual bit of dough up. We don't want it to stick. So take, just take a little bit, of, little bit of sunflower oil and just rub it all over your tray. This will stop the dough from sticking to it later. So when it comes to rolling your dough, again, we don't want too much flour on the table. If the dough is a little bit soft, don't be afraid to use a little bit of flour in your hands because we don't want too much on the table because we need the dough to actually grip the table. So we want to grip and pull in from underneath. So when we're rolling, we kind of start here. So it rolls from here, working the dough into here. So the big thing is to apply pressure, push the dough into the table and you're making a big circle. Keeping your fingertips on the table, let your hand come up, a bit like a claw, go a little bit faster, you should have a nice little ball. So if you feel the dough starting to tickle at all, stop, a little bit of flour, you can go again. So the dough, big circle, bit of pressure. As you ease off, your hand comes up, a little bit faster, and just left a nice little ball. And don't worry if they're a little bit scraggy initially, particularly if you're not used to portioning dough, because you're going to find that they're a little bit all over the place. Don't be afraid, just give them a little roll. You can always come back to them in a couple of minutes and just give it a second little roll, just to help tighten them up. And then once you get used to it, you'll be very quickly doing it with two hands. So then as you arrange them onto the tray, just give them plenty of space because they are going to prove, they are going to get bigger. We just don't want them to touch. Just give them a little bit of sunflower on the top because we're going to cover them over with cling film just to stop them from drying out. So to stop it from sticking to the dough because later on when we try to take the cling film off, if you find it sticks to the dough, it's going to pull it, it's going to deflate them. Just add a little bit of oil again on top it'll stop them from sticking. And you can actually squash them down ever so slightly. So these are gonna prove again at room temperature for about another hour and a half. So depending on kind of how you've worked your dough, whether you've put it in the fridge um, or you've left it at room temperature, your proving times will start to vary. For example, if you've taken it from the fridge, you're gonna find that your dough is quite cold. So you might find, cause it's gonna take that little bit longer for that dough to come up to room temperature. So you're gonna find that a much longer prove the second time round. Again, if it's working at room temperature and obviously depending on, it's probably the one biggest comment we get about the, is the variation in proving times. Um, it's so difficult for a recipe to be exact because of the variations that go on for the temperature in our room, the liquids that we're using, the temperature of our ingredients. So if you kind of find that your house is quite warm and your dough is moving a little bit quicker, don't be afraid to crack on. If you need to give it a little bit less time, that's absolutely fine. Trust your instincts. If you're starting to question it in your head and you feel like you should, um, it needs to go, go ahead. Don't worry at all. So we'll cover that over, pop it to one side, and we'll let it prove one more time. So we got a little bit of extra dough here. So we're just gonna show you very quickly how you make little ring donuts. A little bit of flour on the table, and just rolling your dough out. So as you work the dough, you're gonna find that it naturally wants to shrink and it wants to pull back. Simply, it's just the gluten contracting. So the easiest thing to do with your dough is just leave it alone, let it relax. Just give it 30 seconds, a minute break, allows the gluten to relax and you have to put in half the amount of effort. Also means then, once the dough is nice, relaxed, before you cut it, it's gonna retain the shape that it does. Because if you were to cut it immediately now, you'd find that immediately the dough just pulls in. So you're kind of losing the shape. So just give it a couple of minutes. And when we roll it out, we just wanna go on probably less, just under a centimeter. And then very simply for our little ring donuts, you need two cutters, two different sizes. So I'm using an eight centimeter and a little three centimeter just to cut out the center. So as I said, you wanna let the dough relax because if you kind of cut it again immediately, if you the way that the dough naturally wants to shrink and it's pulling away, it's now being much smaller than what we originally started with. Just by giving your dough a couple of minutes just to relax, you'll find that you don't get half the amount of shrinkage. You can see immediately we cut the last ones, the very first one, it was immediately pulling back in. And each time as you cut it, just dip your cutter into the flour. And just stop it sticking, it can cut much cleaner. And then literally cut out the very center. Like this is the one that we cut straight away after rolling the dough out. It's pulled in, it 
it's not retained its shape as much. An exact same cutter, much better shape, better size. So you can see the difference. Pop them onto your tray. We let them improve again. And then your little trimmings left over. You can always bring it back together into one little piece and portion it again, 60 grams, and we'll use that perfectly for our little filled donuts, which we're going to finish later on. So our donuts are ready to go. They've been improving for probably the last 90 minutes or so. It's quite warm in here. So if you kind of find that your kitchen's a little bit colder and your dough hasn't quite uh, reached this size yet, don't be afraid to give it a little bit longer. If it needs an extra 15, 20 minutes, feel absolutely, that's absolutely fine. If you're kind of questioning your head and you feel like, I should give it a bit longer, yeah, you probably should. Trust your instincts, you will get there. And the idea is that each time you're doing it, you're learning. So if you kind of, so the idea is you should be able to touch the dough. Because we need to physically pick these up, they should have a nice little bounce to it. There's no fear of kind of touching them and that the whole thing is going to sink and collapse. So if you kind of found that you're touching it and it's losing its shape, it's deflating, you've probably overproved your dough. So you want to just reduce that proving time and let's catch it a little bit sooner. We want to cook it with the presentation side facing up. If you kind of pop the oil and you flip it over, you'll find that the dough that tends to lose its shape. It tends to spread out. So we have preheated our oil to about 180 degrees and we're gonna pop each donut in. It's gonna fry for about two minutes on either side. And as you're dropping them into the oil, just kind of drop them away from you. So at least if there's any little splashes of oil, it's gonna splash away from you. And if you ever find that you get these little kind of air pockets to form, you can just pop them. And then halfway through, just gonna flip them over. So then just so for the excess oil is gonna be on them as they come out, a little bit of kitchen paper. So we transfer it on, it'll just absorb that excess oil. So we just want an even color on both sides. And that is it. Just two minutes either side. They're beautiful light, they're fluffy, like little pillows. So we're gonna let them cool slightly. Halfway through, we'll just turn them over just to get any excess oil off. And we'll coat them in a little bit of sugar. And then later on, when they're fully cooled, we're gonna fill them. So we got our lovely little ring donuts. They got a nice little bounce to them. You don't want to overproof them, because again, we need to physically be able to pick them up. And when you're dropping them into the oil, we want to keep that presentation side facing up, just nice and gently, drape it into the oil. And then they're gonna fry for about a minute and a half, either side. And then just so you can see, basically I'll just pop this one presentation side facing down, and you'll just actually see the difference in the way in which it fries. The donuts are just finished. And you can just see, this is our one little donut that we fried presentation side down, as opposed to presentation side facing up. And you can see the way it's kind of spread out the sides in comparison to the others. So our donuts have just been allowed to cool ever so slightly. So we still want to get them while they're a little bit warm. It just helps the sugar to uh, stick to them. So when it comes to dressing and filling your donuts, that's where you can really start to express yourself. Really go mad with your flavors. This is all about indulgence. They're so, so light. Really, really no weight to them whatsoever. And then we're gonna let them cool completely and then we're gonna fill them. So our donuts are cooled. They're coated in sugar. We've been fighting the temptation not to tuck in. So now the last thing that's to do is to fill them. So I find the easiest thing to use when it comes to filling my donuts, I actually just use the scissors. So straight in the center and open the scissors. It's going to create that little pocket, which we're going to pipe into in a second. It's going to be straight in. So we just got a couple of different fillings here. So we got a white chocolate and caramelized hazelnut, which we're going to fill into one. It'll be straight in the center and you'll actually feel them bulge. Don't be shy with the filling. Then we've got just a little bit of strawberries and cream. Like we do donuts every weekend at the bakery. Been doing it for years. They absolutely fly. Finally then, a little bit of salted caramel. And 
a little garnish to finish them off. Strawberries and cream. Finish with a little flake. Almost like a 99. Caramelized hair. These are some crystallized. And there you have donuts. Perfectly filled. Little pillows of joy. Sugar coated. Different fillings. I dare you to find someone who does not love a donut.